we are going to do one of our favorite crock pot recipes. It is the French onion burgers. I've shared these many times on my channel, but in case you're new here, because I have been growing a lot recently, so I wanted to share these again. Um, I have seared up some burgers. As you see, I've got six here. I didn't cook them all the way through. I just seared them on the outside just to lock in the flavor and the seasoning. I seasoned them on both sides. I seasoned them with some Vidia Complete and some red garlic kinders. Now in my crock pot, I'm going to add in some French onion soup mix. I'm gonna add just a little bit at the bottom so that way the burgers aren't sitting directly on the bottom of my crock pot. So just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add my burgers in. This is so easy. The original recipe idea for this came from a cookbook that I had found at the flea market. And it was from like the 1900s. It wasn't even a crock pot recipe. It was a stove top recipe and I turned it into a crock pot recipe. Added some more ingredients and y'all, it is one of our favorites. So four of them will fit at the bottom. So I'm going to add in some more of that French onion and add these other two on top. I'll move them around once I get um, cooked. And another reason why you should sear the, the patties, it's gonna help with the, it's gonna help reduce the amount of grease that's in the crock pot when you sear them off because that, that's going to release a lot of grease. I'll show you my pot right here. All of that is what got cooked out of just searing them on both sides. So that will also help with the amount of grease that's in your crock pot. So I've got those in there and then I also have an onion. I sliced up a whole onion and I'm just going to add it in here on top of that and that's it. This is like so easy, couple ingredients. I absolutely love this recipe. Um, I decided, because I've had a few people ask for my version recipe typed up, so I've decided to go ahead and type up my version of this. But like I said, this wasn't my original recipe. It was adapted from um, another cookbook and I'll make sure to put that in the recipe link that will be linked below for y'all. But Luke absolutely loves these. We serve these on some hamburger buns with some provolone cheese and it is so good. I've had a couple people ask what I do with the sauce that it makes, you know, with the French onion. You can dip it, you can dip your burger in it. You can spoon a little bit of it on top it is the flavor that the French onion soup gives while you slow cook these burgers. It is just so good. So good. So, highly recommend trying out this recipe. So, we're just going to put the onions on there. And then we're just going to put the lid on it and let it cook on low for about six to seven hours. To go along with our burgers, I'm gonna make some baked beans in the crock pot. One of the joys of having 10,000 crock pots, <laughs> I can do main dish and side dish. So I've just got one can of the brown sugar baked beans and one can of pork and beans. I'm just using what I have in the pantry for this. I don't have a recipe. I think that's one of the good things about like baked beans is you can just kind of add whatever you feel like it, whatever you have on hand, and they normally turn out pretty good. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of seasonings, and you're good to go. We're gonna add in some bacon. Just gonna use what I have left, which is not much. But, and then for seasons, I'm gonna add in some pepper. 
and just season with your heart. Garlic powder. And some garlic or onion powder and now this is garlic powder. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add in some yellow mustard. Just probably about a tablespoon. And then some Worcestershire sauce. Probably a couple tablespoons. We like our sweet, so I'm gonna go in with a couple tablespoons of brown sugar. And then I'm also gonna add in some barbecue. My favorite is the Sweet Baby Ray's, but of course use whatever your family likes. And then we're just gonna mix it together. If you like raw onion, you could add raw onion in here. Since I have onion in the burgers, I'm not gonna add more onion. So I dug through the fridge and I remembered the other morning I made breakfast and we literally had two pieces of bacon left. So we're going to cut up some more bacon because it definitely needs more bacon in my opinion. That was not enough. So luckily I can add in some more. And then everything's cooked here so you're just kind of heating it through. Of course the longer the better, you know. Just let all the flavor and everything marry together. So we're just gonna keep these on warm and they'll cook for the same amount of time. They'll be on for the same amount of time as the burgers, about six hours. And if need be, I can turn it on low if I notice that, you know, they need to be turned down, but that's it. And I'll come back once they get heated through and I'll taste it and see if I need to add any more brown sugar or any more seasonings, anything like that. That's it. Easy side dish. Here are the burgers once they are all cooked. Y'all, the house smelled so good. I'm telling you, this is one of our favorite recipes. And I've had a few people comment on my videos saying that they've tried them and that their family loves them. Highly recommend. Don't forget that I will have this recipe linked down below. You have got to try it. We just served ours on toasted sesame buns with some of the onions on top and provolone cheese. We are finally making potato soup again. I've had several people ask me for this recipe. Now, when I made the potato soup in the previous crock pot recipe, I just made it for me. So as most people would say, I didn't add a lot of flavor. <laughs> Cause y'all know I'm not a huge fan of onions and all that stuff. And I made it super simple cause it was just me eating it. But here I'm making it for the family. So I'm gonna add in onions and bacon and all that good stuff. So this recipe for this version is what the one I'm gonna have typed up. You can alter it depending on your taste and your family's liking. I have about eight to 10 potatoes here. I left the skins on. You can peel them or leave the skins on. I'm gonna cover it with water a little bit. So you're kinda gonna start it out the same way as how you do the crock pot mashed potatoes. Kinda gonna start it out the same way but I do have some onions and bacon cooking up on the stove right now. And I will add that in just to help give it some flavor. So of course, if you have a chicken broth, just use chicken broth in your place of the water and bouillon. And then I'm gonna season it up with some salt, some pepper, some paprika. Just season with your heart. 
I'm also gonna add in some garlic powder, but I am gonna be adding in some minced garlic to the onion and bacon mixture. Ooh, I about dropped that in there. That wouldn't have been good. So over here I have a whole onion. I've chopped it up with my food chopper, so that way it's really small. For me, mainly for me. But I still wanna add that flavor in for everybody else. Also have half of a pack of bacon that I just kinda cut up into pieces, as you see. And I put like a tablespoon of butter just to get it started because as the bacon renders it's you know gonna have the fat so I just want to cook this of course you don't have to worry about your bacon getting crispy because you're putting it right in your crock pot and it doesn't matter but the other half of the bacon we will cook up separate and we will have it as a topping on your potato soup and like the previous potato soup recipe I used kielbasa so if you don't want bacon, you can use kielbasa, you can use diced ham, or you don't have to have any protein at all. So I'm gonna let this cook up a couple more minutes and then we are gonna add in a couple tablespoons of minced garlic, turn the heat off, and then we will add it to our crock pot. on low since I've got so many potatoes it's probably gonna take about six hours uh, normally when I do my mashed potatoes I do them on high for four hours but I'm not in any hurry so I'm going to do it on low for about six hours so it is ready for the next step the potatoes are cooked some of them are falling apart, but they're pretty much just fork tender, which is what you want. I still like a bite to mine. I mean, not clearly not raw, but you know what I mean. Like, see. So I like to mash up a couple of them. It also helps to kind of thicken it up. So I'm gonna use my immersion blender and I'm just gonna hit it a couple times. But you can also use, um, just mash them. I still like the chunks, but this is gonna help pick it up. softened cream cheese it's better if it is room temperature or softened and then I'm gonna add in a little bit of cream and then I tasted the broth and it needs some more seasoning so I'm gonna go in with some pepper just the same ones that we used at the beginning we're just gonna hit it again with all of them you always want to season in layers and season as you go
I'm also going to add in some oregano. And then we're going to give it a stir. So I'll let it sit for a little bit. That's just gonna help um, just heat that cream cheese through so it kind of just mixes in really good. And then, now for me, it's still a little thin. I like mine thicker with the chunks. So my favorite way to thicken up potato soup is with instant potatoes. So we're going to take some instant potatoes and I'll just eyeball it, just add a little bit and just give it a stir so you like the, you know, the texture, the consistency that you want for your family. I feel like everybody's different when it comes to soup. And then of course, give it a taste to make sure it doesn't need any more salt or garlic or any of that. Like I said a second ago, whoa, that made a mess. It's good to season in layers. Season as you go. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit for a second. Let that thicken up a little bit. I do have it on warm. And we're just gonna kinda let that thicken up and see if we need to add any more. And But we will be adding some cheese. We're gonna be adding in our cheese. Give that a stir and let it finish thickening up. If you like it thicker, of course, just add more potato flakes. I ended up adding in a little more but the good thing about adding the potato flakes is that's just to your liking. You, if you want it thicker, then add more. If you want it thinner, then don't add as much. Here it is when it is all done. So delicious. I just served mine with some sour cream, some extra cheese, and some bacon on top. And here is my bowl. I just served it with some bacon cheddar jalapeno cornbread. I will have that recipe linked down below for you guys. But y'all, this was so delicious. So creamy and cheesy. And don't forget that I will have this recipe typed out finally for you guys. I know I've had a lot of people ask. So y'all can find that in the description box. And that is it, y'all. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I don't know about you, but I love me some crock pot recipes. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.